Well, hello, booze and ghouls, and welcome to Terry's True Paranormal Experiences. I would like, if I may, to take you along on a strange journey. In honor of this holiday season, when the light of day is shortest and the darkness invades our lives with long, frosty nights, I'll tell you a little bit about the town of Frostburg. While I attended Frostburg State College, now it's a university, I lived in Frostburg, Maryland, appropriately named because it sits about 15 miles outside of Cumberland up into the Appalachian Mountains. Weather takes an abrupt change ascending into the mountains west of Cumberland. While it'd be nice and sunny at the foot of the Appalachians, Frostburg, in the summer months, is frequently shrouded in dense fog and a chill in a damp air that will freeze you to the bone. Winters are even worse. It would get so cold that walking from campus building to campus building, the cold would make my eyes water and the tears would freeze in layers over my glasses. Consequently, when the last days of summer were fading, Frostburg would be the first town in the county to start the autumn frosts. I lived in a grand old house on Main Street, which sat along the main road from Cumberland to Morgantown, West Virginia. My apartment was on the first floor of the house, which was clearly once owned by a wealthier citizen of the town. And my apartment was one of, of two or three that the house had eventually been divided into. Being spacious and open, the apartment was usually a hangout for friends who lived in cramped dorm rooms. It was in my apartment there that I had my first clear view of a spirit. Several mornings when I woke up early as the sun was rising, I would go to the kitchen and see an African-American woman standing, looking out the window into the foggy mists of the backyard. She wore a blue dress in the style of the 1800s with a big white scarf around her neck. Her features were very clear, yet she was semi-transparent. I would stand very still as not to disturb her and just watch. I wasn't scared at all. In fact, my heart went out to her. Something told me she had been a slave at some point. The look on her face was like a yearning or maybe a sadness. It was like she was looking for someone to come walking out of the mist in the backyard. That person would never show up, and after several moments, she too would just fade away. I had another experience as well. In Frostburg, there wasn't much for college students to do when we weren't studying. The town is relatively small, other than the student population. During our summertime, the town seemed to go dormant as businesses all but closed down for the season while classes are out. Regardless, year-round, we were given two options. Either go to one of the numerous local bars or hang out with your friends and figure out what to do for entertainment. Entertainment which often involved doing something stupid. And while I was too young for the bars, which didn't always stop me anyway, I would often do things with friends to ease the boredom. One evening in the apartment next to mine, a bunch of us decided to do a seance to contact the recently departed grandmother of one of the girls in our group. A candle was lit and we all sat in a circle around it with the lights out. One of us was the leader of the seance who told us to hold the hands of the other people beside us and close our eyes while we concentrated on the girl's grandmother. The seance leader then called forth the spirit of the girl's grandmother and nothing happened. We sat briefly in silence, waiting. As we sat there, eyes closed, awaiting a sign, Suddenly a warm, calming feeling came over me. I could smell the scent of Old Spice cologne, and I instantly knew this was my grandfather. My grandfather who had passed away about ten years prior. I said nothing about it until everyone asked me what had happened. They said I had suddenly had a real peaceful, relaxed look about me, 
and they really saw a change come over my appearance. I knew then that my grandfather was watching over me. It was an amazing and very comforting experience. So for now, unless the Krampus grabs you and drags you away screaming and kicking, may you have a very scary Christmas. <laughs> Ho 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 